Hi guys, I'm Rob. I uh, play guitar in Dobopod, and we're at Bell's Brewery in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm going to talk about my guitars and my amp and my pedals, which I'm excited for because I'm a geek and I really like to talk about it. I'll start with my guitars. This is what I've used pretty much all the time. Like I've had it since before Dobopod even existed. And it's a Paul Reed Smith Hollow Body 2. I got it in 2005. I got it new then. Uh, and I've used it for just about everything. For a long time, it was just the only guitar I owned, you know. Um, but it's great. I love it to death. It's my baby. I, I can't part with it. Um, it's got a maple top and a maple back and then mahogany sides. The next mahogany and the fretboards are rosewood. And it's really standard. It's Everything's pretty much stock in it. You know, it's just got volume tone and a three-way switch. The pickups are really nice because they, they're not really gainy. They're really simple and clear sounding, which, you know, uh, I think is a good pickup because it just lets you sound like you. It doesn't mask anything. Sometimes on a bad night, I wish they would mask it more, you know. But on good nights, I'm glad that it's clear and lets every little detail come out. And I also, I, in the last like year or so, I replaced the bridge and the tuners because they were just totally shot and old. So I put new ones on. They're both the same PRS parts, though. I just put them back on. And I also a few years ago, I had my friend Kevin Chubbuck, whose T-shirt I'm also wearing, uh, who's an awesome luthier and builds beautiful guitars. He carved a new nut for it, a bone nut. Um, so yeah, that's Kevin Chubbuck. Check out his guitars. He's awesome. Um, and I'll, I'll play this one a little bit for you to show you what it does. Well, here's some clean stuff first. And then it's I, I especially love it for its bridge pickup sounds. So yeah, that's my main guitar. I pretty much use it all the time. My other guitar, which is also a Paul Reed Smith, I'll grab here. Uh, this is a Paul Reed Smith Studio, which I just got a couple months ago. They just stopped making it. They don't make it anymore, but it's really cool. It's a lot different than the uh, than the hollow body. Um, in a few different ways. First off, it's a solid body, so it's not hollow. Uh, but it's a maple top and mahogany body. And uh, it's got these pickups in it called narrow fields, which are really cool. They're like a cross between single coils and humbuckers. They're a little hard to describe, but they're neat. And then it just has a 5708 humbucker in the bridge, which is like just kind of a screaming Les Paul kind of thing. And then uh, it's got five-way switching like a Stratocaster, so I can get kind of those in-between sounds like Mark Knopfler or something like that, which is really cool. And it also has a coil tap, but only for the bridge pickup. These ones can't split. But this one, if I want like a telly sound or something like that, I can uh, coil tap it. And also the biggest difference is that it's got a floating tremolo in it, which is really cool. It's a lot of fun, but it's sort of a pain in the ass. I actually keep it blocked a lot of the time. I got this little thing in it called a tremolo, where if I turn these screws, I can just block the tremolo so it doesn't do anything. It just, it's like a hard tail. Um, Right now I have it open though, and it's really fun to do it. The floating trim I can go up or down in pitch, which is really neat. I'll show you here. Uh, Just a cool toy. Um, that's new to me. I'm still getting used to it, but I like it a lot. You know. So those are both my guitars. That's the only guitars I have. But I have used other stuff too. I used a Tele and a Strat for a while. 
which isn't really in the picture anymore. But uh, And then I guess I'll do my pedals next. I have, uh, well, right here I have a Digitech Whammy pedal, which I just started using. It's actually Eli's. Uh, he didn't let me borrow it. And I'm still getting used to it. It's pretty fun to use, but it's a little detrimental to my tone, so I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep it. But it's fun. Um, and then on my main board, on all this stuff, I just, it's pretty much, I don't add pedals very often. I don't like to have a lot of them. Um, so I've kept it pretty much the same since day one and added like a couple things here and there or just replaced stuff with better versions of what I already had. So I have a tuner right here. Obviously, it's a tuner. There's not much to talk about with it. This is, it looks like a tube screamer, but it's actually made by Maxon, who actually invented the tube screamer, fun fact. Uh, and it's called a Vintage Overdrive Pro, and it's like the best tube screamer pedal I've ever used, man. It's, it's got a lot more low end and a lot more gain, although I have the gain set kind of low, so it sounds a little more like a regular tube screamer, but it's just a little more hi-fi and clear. You know, um, it's just really pretty sound, and I like it. It can get a lot more gain than that, though. And then this other overdrive here, which I've also had this since the beginning of Dopapod. It's always been there. It's an Analog Man King of Tone overdrive, and it's got two buttons on it. It's got an overdrive, which is a really slight thing. It's actually, I use it more for rhythm guitar. It's just slightly dirty. <laughs> And this is a clean boost, so if I turn this on, then it's more of a solo-y kind of thing. It's kind of more like a John Schofield thing, actually. Like, uh... But it's nice. So most of the time, though, for soloing, I turn on all three. <laughs> So that's the Maxon and the King of Tone together. Most of the time when I'm soloing, it's that. But I got a lot of combinations I can use between those three buttons. And then after that, I have this Electroharmonics Pog pedal, which is an octave pedal, which is cool. I've been using this forever, too. And then this is a... Uh, Another pedal by Maxon. I really like the Maxon stuff. I use a bunch of their stuff. It's just everything I have from them sounds awesome. And this is an analog delay, an AD, what is it called? AD999. And it's just like a really warm delay that I set to a longer kind of David Gilmore thing. I set it kind of subtle because I feel like if I use too much delay, then it, it, it gets too milky and you can't hear details and then it's just a big puddle of shit, you know. But I can get it to freak out like crazy too if I turn the repeats all the way up. It, I can go to space. That one's really fun. Um, and then I have another delay too. This is a Boss Giga delay, which is actually Luke, our sound guy. He lent it to me when my old one broke. Uh, and it's cool because it's digital, so it's clear. And I can. this button is just kind of connected to this it's so I can tap with it. I can tap the tempo of the delay that I want. So most of the time, this delay here, I just have set to a slapback kind of sound. It's really subtle, and you almost don't even know it's on. people would never even know it's there until I told them about it. But I like it because I don't use reverb hardly ever, and that's sort of my version of reverb, just to give it a little more life, you know? And then I can save presets with this thing too, so I've got some other sounds here too. I've got this one set to a quarter note delay, which is a lot longer, and I pretty much only use that for a song of ours called Sonic, which is, uh, the like intro part goes like this. And that's just about the only time I use that. 
And then this is like a dotted eighth thing that I use for more like a David Gilmore kind of another brick in the wall part one kind of sound. <laughs> And then this one is really fun. It's just backwards. So everything I play comes out backwards. And that one's really fun too. And then there's one more preset, but I don't have anything in there. I don't use it. Uh, this is a phaser, which there's not much, too much to talk about, but it's kind of like uh, Breathe by Pink Floyd or Shine On Your Crazy Diamond. It's a really swirly thing. I need a phaser, it's just really cool. I also manipulate the button a lot to change the rate of it. And then lastly, this last one is an awesome pedal. It's made by a company called Strymon and it's called a Flint. Uh, and it's a reverb and tremolo pedal. And uh, this is the reverb sound. Right now I have it, it has three settings, it's got 80s, 70s, and 60s. The 80s one's really weird. It just sounds like reverb right now, but if I turn this decay knob all the way up, the reverb just goes on. Which is cool, but once I turn the, uh, the tremolo on, I can manipulate that reverb sound. That's really fun. Most of the time with the trem tremolo sound, I just leave it set to more of a subtle kind of like country Bill Frizzell thing for like clean sounds. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. For stuff like this that's like more like choral. subtle thing like that. So that's all my pedals. Like I said, I don't, I try to limit how much I use uh, to keep my sound clear and like more hi-fi, I guess. And because I get too confused if I have too much stuff and then I have too many buttons and then I'm not worried about playing, you know, I'm more concerned with what I'm stepping on, which I, I love people who are like architects with pedals. You'll see Chuck later is like a master at it, but I don't have the focus to do it. Um, and then lastly is my amp. This, the, my hollow body guitar here, and this amp have been the only amp and guitar mostly that I've used in Dobopod since like the very first show I ever played. And this amp is a 1978 Fender Vibrolux Reverb, which has two 10 inch speakers in it. And it's modded a lot. I didn't mod it, but whoever owned it before me had it black faced, which means they, they got a bunch of work done to it so that all the components inside are, are the exact same thing as a Vibrolux from the 60s, a blackface one. And it sounds really good. I, This is the reverb side of it, which most people plug into. I never use it though, because it's too loud. I always get yelled at when I use it. So I just use the one that doesn't have any reverb, this regular side. It just has volume, treble, even when the knob broke off, I can't adjust the treble, and bass. Uh, and it sounds great. It's just a nice, simple palette. It gets really dirty if I turn it up a bunch here. Let me see if I can get it to. and nice, but I never turn it up that loud. I don't have an excuse to. I pretty much always keep it on three. You know, I, I never even touch the knobs on the thing. There's no reason to. And in the back of it, the speakers are really weird too. I just got this speaker called, what's it called? This speaker is called a Weber DT10, which is like Derek Trucks' signature speaker. 
And I don't know anything about speakers, but I got to put it in there because it was the only speaker the guy had. But it seems like it's really nice. I can't tell you much about speakers, though. Um, but this amp's really special. I feel like it's kind of one of a kind because of all the modifications that have been done to it. And I have yet to find an amp I like better. When this works, it, it's been having problems lately, but I really don't want to find something else because I like that one. And that's everything. That's about it. Yeah.